Good evening and welcome to the Board of Mayor and Aldermen meeting. It is November 1st, 2022 and it is at 7 p.m. Um, call this meeting to order. We do have a quorum. Tonight the prayer will be with Vice Mayor No, and the Pledge of Allegiance will be with Dr. Bill Burns. If everyone will please rise for the prayer and the pledge. Let us pray. Our most graciously and heavenly Father, we come before you this evening with humble hearts, open minds, bowed heads. Lord, we would ask that you watch over our fair city. Thank you so much for an incredible, beautiful day in your world because we know that without you, nothing is possible. Lord, we ask that you help this board make decisions that will benefit all of Laverne and its citizens. And these things we ask through your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Dr. Burns. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dr. Bill Burns. I'm a retired uh, Army uh, doctor with uh, 12 years prior to service in uh, the Navy. If there are any veterans uh, here tonight, could you please uh, raise your hand and be recognized? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, ladies, there's a, a, a small token of appreciation. I'd like you to uh, take their hand. now in uniform and veterans hand salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Burns. First item is to approve the minutes from the October 6th, 2022 regular meeting. Make a motion to approve. I have a motion to approve from Alderwoman Honeycutt. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Minutes are approved. Moving on to departmental reports. Chief Davis with the police department. Mayor, Vice Mayor Alderman, you have your current summary um, for the month of October in your packet here. Uh, just like a broken record here, same thing every month uh, this year. This month, uh, we had, uh, we had, uh, um, excuse me, 10 cases where motor vehicles were broken into and all 10 of those motor vehicles were left unlocked, resulting in uh, one firearm um, being stolen out of that vehicle in the hands of a criminal in the city now. Also in the package you see I, uh, activity from the officers. Uh, as you can see our numbers are getting a whole lot better now that we are sufficiently staffed. You can see 1,382 traffic stops, 26 DUI arrests, 36 arrests for, for uh, drug violations. Uh, I will add that these stats are being put online as well so any member of the community can look at that as well. Any questions? How's Blue Sentinel going? I'm sorry? Blue Sentinel, how is that going? Blue Sentinel's going good. We're in our, our phase two. Uh, uh, right now, we're in the process of getting the cameras installed up by I-24. Uh, that's the easiest because there's already meters on the poles there. So that's gonna be the easiest. The other uh, others that we're getting put up, uh, because there's no power or poles that we can use, we're having to kind of go back and punt and get, uh, Solar panels, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Get solar panels for those things so we, can, so we can power it that way, which I think that's the way we'll go forward in the future to where we just use solar power uh, to power those. But other than that, we're, we're moving right along with that. Does anyone have any questions? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Fire Department, Chief Beasley. Thank you, Vice Mayor and Vice Mayor Alderman. I trust that y'all have had an opportunity to review the reports, and as you can see, there's no new trends. We're on par with everything that we do month to month. Nothing unusual to talk about within the reports. Um, I do have a couple of things worth mentioning that are happening this week and next week, if y'all don't mind. Obviously, we know that there's a groundbreaking for new Fire Station 41. This week is a monumentous occasion. Obviously, it's long overdue, and thank, thank you to the Board of Mayor and Alderman for securing the funds to make that happen. Additionally, we have next week four recruits graduating fire school. 
be the first time the Laverne Fire and Rescue has invested in a fire school itself. So with these four people that are graduating, um, four people that have done exceptionally well, been on campus with them multiple times in the last 10 weeks that they've been there and watched and participated in their training. Uh, our fire <coughs> instructors have been part of the, the recruit training, so we've not just sent somebody off to be trained, so we participated in that. Uh, it's a great partnership between Murfreesboro Fire and Rescue and Lebanon Fire Department. So it's a great product. Two of those individuals came from our Fire Explorer program. So we've invested in this community and continue to do good work with those uh, young people in the high school. It's great to hear. Do y'all have any questions? Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Parks and Recreation Department, Mr. David McGowan. Mayor, Vice Mayor, Board, thank you. You guys have the numbers for you uh, for the month for the Parks Department in front of you. 85 help desk tickets, 708 hours devoted to those. Let me see some of our projects. We're doing a little um, kind of a like spring cleaning, fall cleaning, I guess, at the Parks Department, paint some offices in the shop area. You see our past events, October the 15th, we wrapped up the fall ball clinic uh, that Saturday with a scrimmage day. October 22nd, we had goblins and goodies followed by a zombie night. Um, unfortunately, we did have to cancel the movie due to the wind conditions. Um, we are working on something in the future that hopefully we won't have to do that again. Upcoming events, Veterans Day, November the 11th. Um, Parade of Lights and Winter Festival is December 3rd. You can see some of the events at the Senior Center upcoming. Lunch at Asuka. November 17th will be their Thanksgiving dinner. Upcoming meetings, Park and Rec on November 21st and the Greenway on the 21st. Park and Rec at 6, Greenway at 7. Um, Veterans Day is November the 11th. That ceremony will take place at 11 o'clock at Veterans Memorial Park. Uh, weather permitting at the wall. If uh, we run into some rain, we will move that to Pavilion A as we have in the past. Um, flags can be purchased um, for $10. They'll dis they'll will they will be displayed during the ceremony. Those are yours to take home after the ceremony. Um, your veterans information will be displayed on those. Um, bricks for the wall are still available. They're $35. Um, each brick uh, up to four lines, 21 characters per line. Forms are available on the city's webpage, or you can call the parks office at 615-793-3224. Um, snow rink, we're planning on setting that back up. We plan to open up on December 1st. It'll run through the 17th. Thursday through Sunday will be the uh, days of operation. Thursday will be four to eight. Saturday, 12 to eight. Sunday will be from one to five. That Sunday, December 4th, that 1 p.m. time slot right now is gonna be limited to families with special needs. So if we have a good turnout and we need to extend that further, we will. So that's something new we're gonna try this year to try to um, offer a little something for everyone. Um, we're not gonna have online registration this year. It's all gonna be in person. I don't think uh, the rink wasn't full enough last year to kind of warrant online registration this year. We will be accepting canned goods and unopened and unwrapped toys that we will donate those uh, to the PD for Christmas. Any questions? David, the, uh, the size of the rink, that, does that increase from last year? It will. It'll double. Well, I won't say double. It'll increase by 50%. So last year it held roughly 48 skaters is what it was rated for. So this year that number should increase. At no time last year did we have 48 skaters on there, but it will give a little more opportunity that if we do run into that, we can open it up and possibly have more toddlers out there at the same time. Okay, and who are the, um, the guest speakers for Veterans Day, the veterans that are speaking? Um, they are Tabitha and Ross Howard. That's the things I did not have written down here. And I think, you may know this, I think we have one more lined up. And you're gonna have to help me out with that one. Steve? Uh, Kathy told me and... You and I are in the same boat? <laughs> <laughs> Kathy, is, Kathy is God sent, and uh, it's almost like you don't worry about it. I think when, when you start to lose your hair, it kind of affects your memory also. <laughs> so we'll blame it on Here that. Here we go. <laughs> did, uh, did the other part of the rink? come in you, did it's you supposed get... to be here friday okay um, it's supposed to the 
the delivery truck is set up um, to pick it up tomorrow. It's still in customs. It's been in customs for two weeks. So Friday is supposed to be our delivery date. So um, last year there was no issue once customs released it with it getting in here within a day. Um, I think I did skip over the Parade of Lights and the Winter Festival. Um, that will begin at City Hall. Um, it ends at Veterans Park with a tree lighting, fireworks, snow rink, and craft and food vendors will be set up. I sent you a text message or an email about Fox had put it on there that it would start at Veterans Park and go the other direction. Yes, sir, and in, in the front part of that uh, media release, they had it right, so how it got kind of backwards at the bottom, um, yeah, it's beyond me. Now, David, is um, Chief Beasley going to be out demonstrating his uh, ice skating prowess like last year? I'm going to practice. I'm coming for you. Is that hip, re hip recovered? <laughs> and then will, will Doug from uh, Public Works, will he be doing the figure skating again this year? That was the plan. I think he kind of offered. And uh, I think Danny also said he was going to come out since he has a hard hat and a vest. Nice. So we should be good. Well, they, they, they can show the lift. Yes, sir. I guess um, the only thing left is to put Michael in the Duncan booth. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one last thing before I go, I would definitely would like to thank Ann Smith for her, uh, her hard work and diligence, keeping our um, events posted and getting those pictures out to the public so they can see what a good turnout we've had. Um, don't want her to get overlooked, but we certainly appreciate her help. Any questions? Thank you, David. Moving on to the library department, Ms. Donna Bebow. Here she comes. Mayor, Vice Mayor Alderman, good evening. For the month of October, our attendance was up. We were so excited, 2,857. And our circulation was also up, 3,115. And we also issued 85 new cards. We've had a lot of people that I met at National Night Out and on Tomber's Day that have come that said they've just moved to the area and needed to get a library card. So we were very happy to accommodate them. We had uh, 19 programs for ages birth to 17 and five for ages 18 and up. We're building those programs back up slowly but surely. Want to talk a little bit about our Saturday movies at the library. Those also have had really good attendance. We just watched Hocus Pocus, the original, this past Saturday. We had several children who really enjoyed that. I was vacuuming today. We always have refreshments. And I was vacuuming today, and something kept hitting and hitting. And I finally looked, and there were Skittles and M&Ms that were hid in my carpet, our carpet. So <laughs> it was very interesting. So we had to get down and start picking those up. But it was fun. November the 12th, we're going to be having a Charlie Brown movie marathon. And of course, it can't be November without Charlie Brown's Thanksgiving. So families, come on out. Enjoy the movie. Uh, we have a wonderful TV. And it's just great to get in that meeting room and watch a good movie and have good refreshments. Tonight, I wanted to talk just a few moments about a couple of programs that we have monthly. These programs, as you know, like our story times, we have ages according to what we help present in the story times. Like on Mondays, we have homeschool story time. That's for kindergarten through third grade. Miss Janice, she uh, teaches the children the states and the capitals and the presidents. They learn it through song and dance. She reads stories that are pertinent to some of the curriculum that's going on and that they do. So it's important that we have those ages, that kindergarten through third grade. We have Once Upon a Story Time on Wednesdays, and that's for our preschool children. So anyone age two and up to about five years old can come to story time and they learn early literacy through fun songs, rhymes, puppets, stories, and so much more. And of course, through the fun of sharing books. 
Jammies and Stories is our one night that we have on Thursday nights at 530. Kids and families, which we've had adults come in their pajamas. And they come and they get to listen to some great stories and it's families of all ages. We have them from babies all the way up to grandparents. And that's just a really fun time for music, music movement, dance, uh, books, and a craft. So that's why we have these ages divided out. We understand that there are siblings that need to come along sometime, and we welcome them. But we really like to focus on the age that we are looking at at that time or that we are there for. So our kids' crafternoon. This is one that is coordinated by a former teacher. She's a former science teacher from St. Cecilia. And this is for students grade first through fifth. Now we're going to have a great program on November the 8th at 530. We like to do STEM in action. STEM meaning science, technology, engineering, and math mathematics. So when we give them crafts such as, a little show and tell here. Okay, looks adorable, doesn't it? When you look at this, do you think of STEM? Okay, but it does. They have to take the kit that is packaged up. They have to read the directions. They have to comprehend those directions. And they have to follow the directions. And therefore, after they have done all of those things, it becomes a really fun and beautiful craft. Show it around here. <laughs> so this is one of the crafts that they're going to be doing. Oops, I have a turkey stuck to a turkey here. Okay, that's the Give Thanks Turkey Wreath. The next thing we're going to be doing is the gliding turkey. Now, it comes in a package like this. And again, they have to open the package. There's no instructions to this one. They have to use their mind and figure out how to put it together to make a glider. When they're doing this, Miss Becky's going to be talking about aerodynamics of a glider using currents of rising air called thermals. And we have a demonstration tonight, Mayor. Yeah. You already did. <laughs> you are, oh. <laughs> All right. Okay, stand and go. There we go. Much better. So the mayor got the aerodynamics just right. And tonight, Miss Becky sent all of the mayor, the mayor and the aldermen a kit to see if you guys can put this together. And we may have to have a contest sometime to see how who can make their glider go the f very far. <laughs> I'll get it out in a moment. <laughs> okay, so do you understand why we would like to have the grades first through fifth? Because we want to get those things you know, over to them. We want them to understand, but have fun while they're doing it. And again, if younger siblings come, we welcome them. We welcome the parents to sit beside the younger st siblings and help them out. One more, and I know I'm taking long tonight, and I apologize. Teens and tweens, and that's ages 11 to 17. Uh, we're going to have a program November 17th at 5.30, and our invitation says, invite a friend and have fun being creative in our do-it-yourself gift workshop. It's a great way to make gifts for families and friends. Uh, Marta, and Lauren have come up with some great creative gifts that be, can be given away or they can keep themselves, but they have to be very creative in it and they have to use their imagination. Now, please note the crafts are geared for ages teens and tweens only. We may be using rubber bands that could pop a little one's finger 
or scissors or things of this sort. So this is why we have the ages 11 through 17. All we ask of the, the teens and tweens who are coming to provide the laughter and we will provide the refreshments and also the supplies. Do you have any questions? And thank you for letting me go very long tonight. No questions? Just comments is you're awesome. Yes. Our team is awesome. Your team is awesome. You, you always correct me on that. And <laughs> <laughs> I do apologize. No, no worries. But, you know, you surround yourself with great people and you can do great things. And that team at the Laverne Public Library is so creative and it's just, it's so much fun to work with them. And that's what we do. We work together. Thank you so much, Donna. Thank you. Moving on to the finance report. Ms. Tanya. It's our first time, ain't it? Welcome, welcome. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Alderman. I just want to apologize. I have no cool show and tell. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'll be doing the financial report for September 30th. Um, in the general fund, expenditures exceeded revenue by 832000 Just a reminder, property tax bills go out October 1st, so we're expecting that revenue to increase. Uh, local sales tax was 969000 above budget, also 198000 above the prior year. State street aid revenues exceeded expenditures by 262000 Stormwater fund expenditures exceeded revenue by 98000 And our water and sewer fund revenues exceeded expenditures by 723000 on your second page are our bank balances. Then on our third page, we're doing comparison to prior year. The general fund revenue was down 67,000, expenditures up 65,000. Water and sewer fund revenue was up 83,000, expenses were up 172,000. And our water sewer tap fee revenue, uh, tap fees were down 47,000. I also wanted to make you aware um, today we did receive the second half of the ARPA money, which was in the amount of five million two hundred ninety-eight thousand. That is amazing. Questions? Thank you so much. You have been training good, Phyllis. She did. <laughs> she did great. Yes. I think she did better than I did. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we have Mr. Danny Campbell with the water treatment plant. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Board. First, I want to say thank you to David to inviting me to uh, go ice skating. I've been practicing my triple axle, so um, I'll show that off. Uh, I hope you've had the opportunity to review our monthly report for November. Uh, one thing I would like to mention is Inframark was able to take part in the Goblins and Goodies uh, event um, on the 22nd, and we uh, always enjoy doing the, the city events and taking part in that, so we appreciate the opportunity for that. Uh, do you have any questions about our report? As usual, can you speak to the customer complaints? I sure can. Uh, in the month of November, we had one customer complaint for high pressure. And uh, when our inspector went out to check the, the pressure, it was about 105 PSI. So we uh, advised the customer to take a look at their, or their pressure reducing valve that seems to have failed in the open position, allowing too much pressure for their home. Question, uh, bleach your pump number three. Yes, sir. What's going on with that? Yeah, that, that went into alarm earlier this month to, uh, for an overcurrent failure. Uh, we're currently working with Ecotech on what would be a better option, whether replacing the pump or purchasing a new uh, smaller size pump that could work with the current skate upgrade uh, project that we're going through. So we're gathering up information, uh, speaking with uh, the city about that and trying to find the best option for the plant that's 
for treatment purposes and financially responsible for that. Thank you. And then Danny, can you speak to the, uh, the spare super pulsator vacuum pump as far as where we are? I know that was a six month window, but where are we with that? Yes, so the, there's been a delay in, that, uh, in the delivery of that, a postponement. So we're working with Walter A. Wood for that. They keep updating us on, oh, it's been postponed, it's been postponed. The expected receipt date uh, is the end of December at this point so okay. that's just the the, ba the bearings that are bad yes yes okay. sir and it's our spare so we do still have the two working pumps but uh we're waiting on that spare so we have some redundancy any other questions thank you sir thank you moving on to old business second reading 2022-23 an ordinance to amend the fiscal year 2022-2023 general fund budget need a motion to approve or deny make a motion to approve I have a motion to approve from Alderman Coates. Is there a second? I second. Second from Alderwoman Honeycutt. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. <laughs> Moving on to the consent agenda. Need a motion to approve or deny? Make a motion, motion to, to approve. approve. I have a motion to approve from Vice Mayor No. Is there a second? Aye, second. Second from Alderwoman Honeycutt. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Moving on to new business, first reading ordinance 2022-24, an ordinance to amend the fiscal year 2022-2023 fire impact fee fund budget. Need a motion to approve or deny? Motion to approve. I have a motion to approve from Alderman Coates. Is there a second? Second. Second from Vice Mayor No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. First reading ordinance 2022-25, an ordinance to amend the fiscal year 2022-2023 general fund budget. Need a motion to approve or deny? Make a motion to approve. I have a motion to approve from Alderman Honeycutt. Is there a second? I'll second. Second from Vice Mayor No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Resolution 2022-25, a resolution to amend the employee handbook. Need a motion to approve or deny? Motion to approve. I have a motion to approve from Vice Mayor No. Is there a second? Second. Second from Alderman Coates. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Number eight, motion to approve a tender and completion agreement with United States Fire Insurance Company for the completion of the 24-inch water main project from the Stones River Roundabout to the water treatment plan. Need a motion to approve or deny? Make a motion to approve. I have a motion to approve from Alderman Coates. Is there a second? Second. Second from Alderwoman Honeycutt. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion's approved. Motion to approve a letter of intent from PG Stones River Partners for the purchase of 169 Stones River Road, Fire Station Number 41. Need a motion to approve or deny? Motion to approve. I have a motion to approve from Vice Mayor No. Is there a second? Second. Second from Alderman Coates. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Motion to approve a rental agreement with Life Point Church to use their facilities for the city's annual employee Christmas party. Need a motion to approve or deny? Motion to approve. I have a motion to approve from Alderwoman Honeycutt. Is there a second? Second. Second from Vice Mayor. No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Last item on the agenda is going to be approve, appoint or remove board and committee members. We have uh, the library board with one term vacant. We do have one applicant, which is Carissa Benton. Need a motion to appoint Miss Benton. I'll make a motion to appoint Carissa Benton. We have a motion to appoint Carissa Benton from Vice Mayor No. Our second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Moving on to Mayor and Alderman comments. Alderman Honeycutt. Well, considering this is my last meeting, um, I jotted a few notes down. First of all, it's been an honor to be a part of this board. I'm proud of our work that we have done together and the things that we have accomplished to move this great city and community forward. I would like to thank the board for their confidence in me to serve and for our police, fire, and all of our staff and their hard work each day keeping our city safe and taking care of our residents. I'm so proud of the pay increases that we passed this year and hope they all know how much they are appreciated and how much that was well deserved. <clears throat> Again, it's been my pleasure to serve with you all. 
well, most of you. Um, I think, um, with that being said, I think someone in purple would do a very good job and do well in this chair next month, and I encourage everyone to get out and vote. And speaking of the color purple, grape just so happens to be my favorite flavor of Kool-Aid. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys again. Thank you. Alderman Coates. Hope everyone enjoyed the trick-or-treat last night. I'd like to thank the police department for keeping our roads safe with the children and I appreciate that. Thank you. And not to forget Veterans Day on November the 11th. And also, make sure you come out and vote. Thank you. Thank you. Vice Mayor, no. I just want to thank Ronnie. Your second <clears throat> shift last Friday came out and uh, hung out with the seniors for a Halloween party. As soon as they walked in, they got a call. They had to leave. <clears throat> Luckily, it was something not bad, so they were able to come back. The seniors are always glad to see men and women in uniform come in and eat with them, dance with them. And then lastly, uh, Alderman Honey, well, no more, Miss Honeycutt. Uh, thank you for accepting the appointment. Thank you for stepping in and stepping up. I'm sorry that your job took a turn for the worse, so to speak, for this position, and it kept you from being here quite a bit. And a lot of people don't know that uh, this is not a real demanding position, but sometimes when you're working, it is. And uh, we do appreciate you, and uh, I wish you and your family the best of luck. And I know you guys are looking, and you're going to be moving. so. Uh, just wanted to say thanks, and, and I know you've made it as much as you could, so thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Vice Mayor No, um, I want to take a moment and thank uh, Chief Davis and the police department for Halloween. I saw many cops out patrolling streets um, with blue lights. I also saw several out handing out candy from, uh, from blue buckets in their car, so um, that is a, a great way to engage the community that's out and about, and, and uh, I've not heard any reports of, of anyone getting hurt, so that, that's a great thing to hear. Um, just want to reflect. It's been four years, and it's been an amazing four years. We've had a, a lot of stuff done. Uh, we've gotten the CMAC grant, and that's going to get going now that we've accepted that uh, contract, so we will see sidewalks and crosswalks on Murfreesboro Road. We're seeing as far as a funded project for widening South Waldron Road and um, working on improvements for both Fergus and Old Nashville. We just voted tonight on uh, getting the 24 inch water line, which was long overdue back on track so we can get both Hollandale and uh, Stones River repaved and looking nice. We brought in some great retail, uh, BJ's Wholesale, Sherman Williams, um, Dairy Queen and many others are, are announced pop shelf that just opened. And uh, so, as always, I want to remind everybody, early voting is going on now through Thursday, 10 to 6. We've got election day a week from today, 7 to 7. You can vote anywhere in the county. So come out, vote, make your voices heard. It's what we want to hear. We want people engaged in this community. Too many times that doesn't happen until it's election time. So for me, let's keep the city moving forward in a positive direction that benefits everybody. With that, call this. Oh, yes, we do need to mention that. Thank you, because Miss Ann has been working on this diligently. So part of our 50th anniversary, we have uh, each month we have different items. So this one, we have the cookbook. It is available digitally on the city's website. You can download it, you can print out your own copies if you want, or just use it on a tablet, e-reader, however you would like to. Lots of great uh, items and recipes from our residents in the community, some from our staff. And uh, I've even heard that Ann Smith's going to start cooking some for us <laughs> every so often. Her and Phyllis. So Bruce can green like that. <laughs> but with that, let's have a great rest of the week. Call this meeting adjourned. <laughs>